Timber beams are used a lot in buildings, for example as part of ceilings, roofs and garages. In this video you will learn how to design and verify the dimensions of a wooden beam according to Eurocode. We'll use the wooden beam of a flat roof as an example. So we'll first find a static system for the timber beam. Then we'll calculate all characteristic loads like dead load, snow load, wind load and life load. Calculate all load combinations. Choose a timber material to find material properties. Then we have to assume the width and the height of the cross section to calculate the moment of inertia. Verify the beam for bending, for shear and then verify the beam for the instantaneous deflection criteria and for the final deflection criteria. Before we get into it, I want to invite you to my free newsletter. I send it out once a week, sharing structural design tips and tricks. You will find the link to it in the description below. So let's get straight into it. Most timber beams are simply supported beams. So we'll also use a simply supported beam as a static system with one whip pin support and one roller support. To keep it in context with the overall system of the flat roof, this simply supported beam can be a secondary beam in a flat roof. This gets a bit easier to understand when we visualize the secondary beams in a 2D section. We can see that the secondary beams are supported by the primary beams. Now let's move on to the loads. The beam needs to resist influences such as wind, snow, life and dead load. Now we can't show how to calculate these loads in this video, but we we'll leave links to articles and videos that walk you through the calculations in the video description. For the design of the timber beam, we'll use a characteristic dead load of 1.08 kN per square meter, a characteristic value of a life load of 1 kN per square meter, a snow load of 1 kN per square meter, and a characteristic wind load of minus 1.0 kN per square meter. Now, as a next step, we'll do load combinations. In short, as the name says, load combinations combine the characteristic loads, as we always design for the worst possible event that could happen. Again, load combinations are a topic for another video, but you'll find a link to an article in the description below. We define ULS and SLS load combinations, and then use the load combinations with the highest value in our calculations later on. The structural engineer needs to pick a timber material, either structural wood or engineered wood, such as glue lamb or laminated veneer lumber are used. Which the designer picks depends on the project, span, cost and also personal taste. For our beam example, we are using a structural timber C24. We can either use Eurocode or tables from manufacturers to find these timber strength properties. For this beam calculation, we need the bending and shear strength and the E modulus. Now, next up, the modification factor K mod. This factor takes into account the effects of the moisture content and the load duration on the properties of the timber. This factor will be used to calculate the design resistance stresses in timber elements. Without going too much into detail, for a flat roof of a residential house where the beams are not exposed to weather, we can define K mod as 0.6. For permanent actions, 0.8 for medium term actions and 1.1 for instantaneous actions. But you should also read up in your national annex. The values are often defined differently there. As for steel and concrete, we also use a partial factor for wood. In our case, for solid timber, we get a partial factor of 1.3. Before we now can finally start with the design of the beam, we need to define the width and height of the beam cross section to calculate the moment of inertia. This is based on the experience of the designer. We'll define the width as 80 millimeters and the height as 240 millimeters. Once we know the height and width of the cross section, we can calculate the moment of inertia of the strong axis, which is needed to calculate the stress due to bending. We'll calculate the moment of inertia as 9.22 times 10 power of 7 millimeters power of 4. Now we're all set for the design of the beam. In the ULS ultimate limit state design, we verify the stresses in the timber members due to bending and shear. Before we start calculating anything, we need to pick out the worst case load combinations for the permanent, medium term and instantaneous actions meaning the highest values, because those actions lead to different resistance stresses, 
due to different kmod values. Since we will design a beam in 2D, we need to transform the area loads into line loads. We do this by multiplication with the distance between the center lines of two beams. So for a beam with spacing of 0.8 meters, we'll get a line load of 1.17 kN per meter for load combination 1. Those line loads can now be applied to our static system. From the three leading load combinations, LC1, LC3 and LC5, we can go ahead and calculate the most critical bending moment. The highest bending moment in a simply supported beam is found in the mid-span and can be calculated with the most important formula in structural engineering, Q times L squared over 8, where Q is the applied load on the beam and L is the span. With this formula, we can now calculate the bending moment for all three different load combinations. Now, as a next step, we calculate the stress in the most critical cross-section due to the moments as moment divided by moment of inertia times half of the cross-section height. Again, we do that for all three load combinations. In the last step, before we can actually check whether or not the cross-section can resist the loads, we have to calculate the resistance stresses of the timber materials. And we do that by calculating Kmod times the bending resistance of the timber material divided by the partial safety factor. Because we have three different Kmod values, we also get three different bending resistances. Okay, now let's check if the utilization is less than one by dividing the resistance stresses through the design stress. As we can see, the highest utilization is 0.88, which is less than one. This means that the beam verifies for bending. That's great, and we can now move on to shear. First, we'll calculate the shear force. The highest shear force in a simply supported beam is found near the two supports and is calculated as Q times L over 2, where again Q is the applied load on the beam and L is the span. We do that for load combinations LC1, LC3 and LC5. With the shear forces, we can now calculate uh, shear stresses in the most critical cross-section as 3 over 2 times shear force over cross-section width times cross-section height. The last step before we can check whether the cross-section can resist the loads is calculating the shear resistance stresses of the timber material as Kmod times shear resistance stress over partial safety factor. And finally, we can calculate the utilization of the cross-section with design shear stress over design shear resistance. We can see again that load combination 3 leads to the biggest utilization, but it's far from 1. So the beam is also verified for shear. Now moving on to the SLS design. In the SLS design of a beam, we verify that the deflection does not exceed values defined either in Eurocode or values from the client. And in case you use timber beams in ceiling systems, you should also verify vibrations. But as we are designing a roof, we don't need that step. Before we start calculating anything, we need to define a few variables. So table 7.2 of Eurocode 5 recommends ranges for the instantaneous and the final deflection, which should not be exceeded for a simply supported beam. The instantaneous deflection should not exceed L over 300 to L over 500. For a 5 meter long beam, this is a range of 16.7 mm to 10 mm. The final deflection should not exceed L over 150 to L over 300. This results in a range of 33.3 mm to 16.7 mm. All right, now let's have a look at how to calculate the deformation. The instantaneous deformation of our beam is calculated with the load of the characteristic load combination. Looking at all load combinations, we can see that LC3 leads to the biggest load where the live load is the leading and the snow load the accompanying variable action. Now we need to transform this area load into a line load by multiplying it with the spacing of the beams of 0.8 meters, which leads us to a line load of 2.22 kN per meter. The deflection of simply supported beams exposed to line loads is calculated as 5 over 384 times the load times L to the power of 4 divided by E modulus times moment of inertia. This leads us to instantaneous deflection of 17.85 millimeters. Now, when we calculate the utilization, we find out that it's greater than one. This means that the beam doesn't fulfill the deflection criteria and we have to change the cross-sectional parameters. 
So we'll increase the width from 80 millimeters to 100 millimeter and recalculate the moment of inertia as 1.15 times 10 to the power of 8 millimeters to the power of 4. Now we run the deflection calculation again with the updated dimensions and get an instantaneous deflection of 14.28 millimeters and see that also the utilization is less than 1 now. Now finally the instantaneous deflection criteria is verified. The final deflection of our beam can be calculated by adding the creep deformation to the instantaneous deflection. Therefore, we will look at how to calculate the creep deflection of load combination 3. We calculate the creep deflection separately for dead life and snow load as we are adding factors to life and snow load. Finally, we calculate the final deformation by adding the creep deformations to the instantaneous deformation. This leads to a utilization of 0.54. And therefore the final deflection criteria is verified and the whole beam is basically verified for the dimensions of 100 millimeters in width and 240 millimeters in height. To summarize, to design a timber beam we have to first calculate the loads and load combinations, define the timber material and beam geometry, verify the beam for bending, shear, instantaneous deflection and finally the final deflection. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. You can also find other structural engineering guides on our homepage, structuralbasics.com. Until next time.